rebuilding what I now know to be a Bassett Logue Tangy model steam engine and this is part 4, fixing the hole in the steam cylinder. On the other identical engine to this that I have in the workshop that belongs to a customer, there isn't a hole drilled through into the cylinder like on this one. I really don't want there to be a hole in the cylinder at this point because it will make it impossible to use a silicone rubber piston ring. I've re-threaded the hole 2BA and this is a 2BA brass bolt. What I'm about to do is coat this bolt in flux and then soft solder the bolt into position in the cylinder. Please note this is not silver solder, this is soft solder. I didn't want to risk distorting this part by heating it to the temperature required to melt silver solder. One viewer asked me, and his name is Chuck, are you going to use JB Weld to fix the hole in the top of the cylinder? And if this was a cast iron cylinder, yes I would be doing that. But because the coefficient of linear expansion on brass is very different to cast iron, I was a bit worried that the JB Weld over time may crack. That's why I chose to do it this way. Now this brass bolt is firmly soldered into the top of the cylinder, I'm cutting it off using the bandsaw. And now all I need to do is flatten this off so you can't see it. It was interesting to note, I can't show you this on the video, but there has been a repair inside this cylinder when it was new using soft solder. As it was being machined there must have been a blowhole inside the cylinder. There are one or two minor imperfections on the outside of this casting too, but that's not a problem. To grind off both ends of this bolt, both inside and outside the cylinder, I'm using this my Proxon motor tool in the holder with the flexible drive attachment. I started off with the flapper wheel but this wasn't aggressive enough so I moved to a drum sander and this started to remove the metal quite well. Maybe you're thinking why didn't I just put the drum sander in the end of the Proxon motor tool and the answer is by using this flexible drive attachment you have a lot more sensitive control. I don't want to dig any lumps out of the outside of the cylinder and I also certainly don't want to do that on the inside. Once I'd removed most of the material from the bolt sticking out of the cylinder, I then went over to using a needle file. Sometimes doing things by hand is a really good idea. And please note I have not inserted a girlfriend joke here. Mainly because I've moved over to using emery cloth and that would be really painful. By using a combination of the needle file, the emery cloth and then back to the needle file and back to the emery cloth, I get a really good finish on the external part of the cylinder. And as you can see, the casting isn't perfect. But by repeatedly rubbing down the area where the bolt is, it just disappears from view. Any other imperfections left on this casting, I will take care of when I come to paint it. Now I have to remove the protrusion of the bolt from the inside area of the cylinder and I'm using a reamer for this. This reamer is not a tight fit in the cylinder, and by using a combination of this and the drum sander in the flexible drive, I removed all of the bolt that was sticking through into the cylinder without damaging the cylinder itself. Now with a piece of aluminium in the chuck in the Boxford lathe, I'm making a lap. Aluminium or wood is good for laps because it holds the grinding compound, which will allow me to get a really good finish inside the cylinder bore. This lap has to be just the right size, if it's too tight it's not going to work, and if it's too slack it's going to be a disaster. And I used to have a girlfriend like that, see I did get a girlfriend joking in the end. It's got to be just the right size, almost a bearing fit. The fit has to be just the same as it would be if you were using Loctite to fix a component to this shaft. There has to be just enough room to allow the Loctite to do its job. Using Loctite to fit a locomotive wheel to an axle is a good example. If you've machined the shaft so it's a really tight push fit into the wheel, then what's going to happen is, as you apply the Loctite, the Loctite is going to get pushed back and it will not be in between the wheel and the shaft. As usual, I only had a piece of aluminium that was far too large for the diameter that I needed, so I'm having to machine quite a lot of it away. This turning sequence has been filmed and then speeded up in the editor, but at last I get there. To finish off the job and make sure it wasn't too tight, I carefully used some emery cloth. And now the fit of the lap into the cylinder is about right. I could push the cylinder all the way on if I wanted to. But before I do that, I need to apply some grinding paste. Although it says fine on the tin, this is actually a little bit too coarse for the job. 
but it will do the trick. And as well as applying grinding paste, I'm applying some of my oil mixture because the last thing I want to happen is for this part to stick on the lap. I've turned the lathe off completely and I'm doing everything by hand. It's not a good idea to run the lathe under power because it will grab the part and spin it round and your hand is going to be in the way. There are many different ways to do this job. I could use a hand reamer, but because of the design of this engine, I cannot get the reamer all the way through the other side of the cylinder, so I thought, no, a lap is the way to go on this one. I could have made a hand boring tool that fitted into the hole in the other end of the cylinder, but no, once again, I think a lap will suffice. Periodically, what I'm doing is blasting the lap with some WD-40. This removes some of the grit. Not all of it, but just some of it. By this time, this was starting to hurt my hand, so I thought it was a good idea to wrap the part in a piece of cloth, like this. And by doing that, it makes the component much more comfortable to hold. I've shortened the video at this stage because it took quite a long time to do this, but now it's nearly at the end of the lap. And that's about it, the job is done. Now what I need to do is the big clean-up operation. I'm starting off with a piece of Scotch-Brite, it's a very worn piece of Scotch-Brite, just to get any particles out of there. And as you can see, the finish is pretty good. But I'm not through yet, this is metal polish. It's actually, I think, Jeweler's Rouge, which is like a pinky stuff. And I'm using this back on the lap to get an even better finish on the bore. And now, by using some cellulose thinners, or lacquer thinner as you call it in the USA, in my usual plastic tub, I'm removing every trace of the abrasive compound from inside the cylinder. You can see how much compound has come out of the cylinder just by looking at the liquid. And using a really good piece of test equipment, my little finger, this tells me that the cylinder is very smooth indeed. This is a block of steel. It's not a surface plate. If I was a proper engineer, I would use a surface plate for this, but this is flat enough. All I'm going to do is just clean up the port face on the cylinder casting. As a lubricant, I'm using some WD-40. The sandpaper I'm using is 400 grit wet or dry paper, and all I have to do is rub the port face against the piece of sandpaper, which in turn sits on the flat metal block. Inspector Meticulous viewers frequently tell me I should always use a figure of eight motion, but I find this difficult. So instead, to satisfy the viewers, I'm taking no chances. I move it from side to side, back and forth, and round and round, and occasionally I'm trying a figure of eight motion. I don't think I've ever had so many double entendres in one episode before. And if you come into this video halfway through, this is about grinding the port face to make it flat. The more I look at this casting, the worse it seems to be. Even on the port face there are some marks that haven't been caused by the valve, it's just not a good casting. I assume that this engine was manufactured in Germany between the wars, so I suppose it depends how close to the end of World War I this was made as to the quality of the metal available to make it. The main thing is though, the cylinder bore is very nice indeed and it no longer has a totally unnecessary large hole drilled on the midway point. So in the previous episode, I machined the flywheel, there's a bit more to do on that, and now the cylinder is once again a serviceable item. I just need to make a connecting rod, a piston rod, and a piston, as well as a crosshead and a cylinder cover. But that's it for now, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.